Hi, and thank you for joining us here at PLCGurus.net's YouTube channel. Uh, if you like this video and want to see more videos like it, please do subscribe to our channel. Uh, also, if you find this video useful in any way, uh, please do click the like button below. And just a quick uh, plug for our blog site before we get going. It's at www.PLCGurus.net. So come on over and check us out. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at the Allen Bradley uh, Stratix 5700 Layer 2 Managed Ethernet Switch. So this is the full software version of the switch I have here, not the light version. And it has the full NAT capability, the network address translation, and the device level ring capabilities built in. So the focus of this video really is just going to be how to initially set up this switch and get it up and running. Um, I'll do uh, subsequent videos which get into more advanced configurations. Okay, so before we get right into it, let's uh, let's just take a look and maybe do a walk around the switch here. So, like I said, the express setup is where we're going to focus on today, and you'll find that right there. So you're going to need a paper clip or something small to get in there to initiate this uh, this process. So if you're a Cisco person, remember this is a Rockwell Cisco partnership. So this is in effect is a Cisco switch. It runs the full Cisco iOS. So if you're a traditional Cisco network administrator, it comes with the standard console port and also the mini USB connector to get you into the command line interface. It has 16 10 100 uh, megabit per second copper ports with the standard RJ45 connector types. We have redundant 24 volt DC power supplies. So this adds a little resiliency. If uh, you lose one of your power supplies, you don't compromise the integrity of your network in that regard. Um, it has a configurable status relay connector here. So you have uh, you know, a couple of relay outputs that you can configure and drive certain alarms that you can monitor say with your PLC or, or logic controller. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in another video. So here we have dual purpose gigabit uplink ports. So these are your standard RJ45 gigabit uplink ports or you can have, you can see you have a slot for an SFP if you want to go fiber uh, up to your uplink to your core backbone switch. And then you can see here we have the 100, 1000 SFP ports as well that if you are going to implement this as part of a uh, DLR, a device level ring uh, technology, uh, with spanning tree or anything, anything like that enabled, you have that functionality or capability to do that on the switch as well. So we're going to hone in on this express setup uh, here uh, button. So you are going to need a paper clip or something small that you can get in there and press this thing. What we want to do is, if this is a brand new switch, once the switch boots up, it takes about 90 seconds and the setup indicator is flashing. You want to press and hold this express setup button for one to four seconds. And that's going to put you into the express setup manager mode via the web interface. That should be no problem if this is a brand new switch. If it's not a brand new switch and this is a, a switch that's been in service, maybe the NVRAM has been corrupted and you want to reset this thing back to factory. What you want to do while the switch is powered up is you want to press and hold the express setup button for about 16 seconds, at which point the setup indicator is actually going to alternate uh, green and red. It's going to alternate flashing green and red. At that point, you release the express setup button and it will go into the reboot sequence. And then what it's going to do, it's going to wipe out that NVRAM and reset it all to default factory settings and it's it's gonna boot up just like you had a new switch again and you'll go right through this process so assuming we've gotten this far what you should see now is one of these switch ports should illuminate and start blinking the documentation says doesn't actually say a specific port it is uh, my experience I've always seen that switch port number one is the one that actually illuminates so what you want to do is you want to plug your laptop or PC into this port the switch is now in the uh, express setup uh, manager mode and it's acting as a DHCP server on VLAN 1000 uh, and the switch itself now has an IP address of 169.254.0.1 what you want to do is you want to ensure that your laptop or computer is configured to obtain 
uh, an IP address automatically. And if you haven't seen the video on how to configure your network settings, I'll include a link to the video here and you can go over there and see how that's done. So assuming your network settings are configured to obtain an IP address automatically, the switch is actually now going to assign your computer an IP address of 169.254.0.2. And if all is good, then we can head on over to the OS and, and verify and validate that all these settings took. So let's head on over there. Okay, so here we are in my VM. Uh, let's head on over to the Network and Sharing Center. I'm going to go here. We're going to go over to Change Adapter Settings. If you haven't seen my PC to PLC network setting or communication video, I'll include a link to it here in this YouTube video. So I'm going to double click the local area connection 2 because that's the one that's going out to my controls network. And I'm going to click on details. And you can see here it gave me an address of 169.254.0.3. So it didn't give me an address of .2. And that's probably because I am running in a VM and my host machines, the physical NIC, actually grabbed .2. And so it assigned the next one uh, to this machine, the VM, at .3. But no worries. It's on the same network as a switch. You can see the default gateway is the switch, so everything is good to this point. So we can carry on. Fantastic. So I'm just going to close out of here. Okay, so let's head on over to our web browser. And up in the search bar, we want to type in the IP address of the switch. So you can see it's auto-populating here for me. Uh, but the IP address is, again, the 169.254.0.1. We'll click Enter, and we get right to the login screen for the switch. So the default username is admin, default password is switch. We'll click login and we'll just give it a second. And here we are. So we're at the uh, express setup page. So you want to go ahead and just you can give it a name. So I'll call it uh, test one. And we'll go ahead and leave the management interface the default one. I mean, you could talk to your network administrator if this needs to change. You want to give it the IP address that you want to assign the switch. So in this case, I'm going to do 192.168.10.2. And the default gateway or the router to which this will be connecting, in my case, it is dot one. We'll leave NTP server where it is, and we'll we'll leave the default password where it is too. So we'll keep that at switch. The advanced settings, we'll leave at the default, and we'll click Submit. Oh, we're getting a message. Oh, we can't have any spaces, so let's just get rid of that space. And here we go. We'll try that again. Okay, so it's giving us a message here. It's saying that you need to connect to the new um, IP address here. Okay, so you can see it's loading us up on the dashboard here. But notice we're still connected on the 169.254.0.1. So if I go over here to configure, just to show you, to VLAN management, you can see here the, the VLAN 1000 that it created for the X setup. Okay, so and you can see that the switch port number one that we're plugged into is currently on that VLAN 1000. And then there is the VLAN 1, our management VLAN, set up at 192.168.10.2. And all the other switch ports are assigned to that. So what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to restart the switch. And what it will do is it will it'll get rid of this VLAN 1000, the express setup VLAN, and reassign the switch port 1 to which we're plugged into to the VLAN 1. Okay, so if all goes well, um, we should be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot the switch, and then we'll have to set up our, our network settings so that we can talk to the switch on the subnet. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've rebooted my switch. Um, I've shut down my browser. So now what I need to do is go over to my network settings, open sharing uh, center. Let's go into change adapter settings, and let's go ahead and statically type this IP address. And I'm going to be, have to be on the same network as my switch. I'm still plugged into switch port 1. Um, remember, when we reboot the, the default VLAN 1000 for the express setup that had that port assigned to it is now going to be on VLAN 1. And just to prove that, let's get in. So I'm just going to choose a unique IP that I know is not being used. 
and that will be sufficient or so it should be sufficient for us to get online with the switch so let's go ahead launch the browser again this time we're going to type in the IP address of the switch that we just set up which is 10.2 good and here we are we're back to where we were before and let's log in and things are looking good so we're here here we are at the dashboard let that load up okay so you can see I am plugged into port 1 you can see it's active uh, the IP address of the switch is the 192.168.10.2 and let's head on over just to the VLAN management screen here just to show you that express that that express setup VLAN rather is now gone the 1000 is now gone and that port 1 was reassigned back to VLAN 1 so that's a critical piece so if you don't reboot the switch you're not going to be able to communicate to your switch over port 1 because it's stuck on that VLAN 1000 so it's not on the same VLAN as the as the actual switch so just keep that in mind okay so if you wanted to get back just to double check the express setup settings you can just go admin express setup and you're back there and you can reconfigure or change things as you see fit so I hope you found this video informative uh, again please remember to subscribe to our channel uh, click the like button and head on over to our blog site at www dot plcgurus dot net. Thank you.